Hi everyone, this is Dr. Demi and I am doing chapter 7 solutions for the workbook for those of you who have the workbook. So this would be chapter 7.1 and um, we will just get right into it. So first things first, the movement of water. There's a question in the workbook about how transpiration is the loss of water from the surface of the leaves and you should explain how this results in the movement of water from the roots through the plant. This is an important question that you're likely to get in your CIE exams um, and usually it's, it's a question that's based on osmosis. So when water is lost from the water, um, when water is lost in form of water vapor from the surface of the leaves, it creates a water concentration gradient. So in other words, the water vapor um, concentration on the leaf surface becomes lower than the water vapor concentration, or should I say the water concentration in the roots, right? And that then causes water to move from a region of high water potential to a region of low water potential as it would during osmosis. And that is what causes the movement of water, basically it creates what we call a transpiration pole. So as the water moves away from the surface of the leaves, it draws up water from the roots. So it's basically creating a concentration gradient whereby water continues to move upwards. So that is how in lay, in very lay words, that is how it happens. But if you want a more detailed explanation, I'm pretty sure my chapter video on chapter seven, um, movement in um, transport in plants um, would explain this in more detail for you. These are just workbook solutions, so I'm not really going into a lot of detail. Um, so how the following factors affect transpiration? So for example, humidity, the greater the humidity, always remember that means the rate of transpiration is going to be low because humidity by definition is the amount of water vapor that is in the atmosphere. So if you have a lot of water vapor in the atmosphere, the surface of the leaf is not going to feel the need to lose water to the atmosphere because again, remember it is osmosis. So the water is not going to leave from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration because then that would be active transport. And that is not what transpiration is based on. Wind speed, so obviously if there's great wind speed, there's going to be a higher rate of transpiration. And the reason for that is that when there's a lot of wind, the wind blows away the water vapor from the surface of the leaf really quickly, causing the leaf to lose more water. And as a result, creating a transpiration pole that increases the rate of transpiration. Um, also, it's the same thing with dry conditions. So when conditions are dry around the leaf, then the leaf is going to lose more water because again, moving down the concentration gradient. And with regards to temperature and light intensity, whenever temperature and light intensity increase, transpiration will increase. And the reason for this is that um, the stomata on the surface of the leaf are likely to open when temperatures are a bit high, when light intensity is good. So that means that transpiration will increase as well because by nature, the stomata will start to lose water. How is the structure of the xylem adapted to its function? This is another um, question that you should expect in the exam. Um, it often comes out either in um, paper one or paper two um, as multiple choice or something you need to write out. So the structure of xylem, remember the xylems are made up of basically dead hollow structures. So they're just like pipes and they allow the movement of water without any interruption with cell activities. So xylems don't have any cell organelles in them. Again, just think of them as like hollow pipes, right? That water can just move through like the plumbing in your house, for example. Um, they have walls that are made of lignin and what lignin does is that it strengthens the xylem so that the xylem does not collapse and it also gives support for the movement of water because water exerts pressure on the walls of the xylem but because the xylem walls are lignified they're not going to burst they're actually going to push that pressure back which then allows the water to move upwards. Xylems also have this tiny holes called pits and what the pits do is that they allow water to move across xylem tissues. So always think of xylems as like a pack of tissues um, or you can even think of it as a pack of pipes that are sort of like sitting with each other. I'm trying to create what might be a 3D structure here but I might not be succeeding um, but whatever the case I hope that you get what I'm trying to do. Um, well, not create a 3D structure, but you know what I mean. Um, so the pits here would allow water to be able to move from one xylem to the other in case there's a problem in the xylem. Say, for example, it collapses 
for some reason, which is highly unlikely. But this is how the structure of xylem adapts its to its function, and its function is to transport water throughout the plant. Um, name for more ad adaptations that enable xerophytes to survive in low water conditions. Um, so I haven't explained how they function on the slides, but I'll just try to give you an idea. Um, so they have few stomata on the surface of their leaves. So if there are fewer stomata, it means that when the stomata open, they won't lose as much water as if there was like a lot of stomata, which would be losing water around the same time, especially when the temperature and light intensity is right. Some of them have very thin hair-like leaves. Um, and because the leaves are so thin, the surface area is so small that they don't lose as much water as a normal plant would. Some of them have sunken stomata, so which means that the stomata are so deep down that whenever they open, they are a bit far from the surface of the leaf to lose water. And some of them have what we call a waxy coating or what you might call a cuticle on the surface of the leaves. And what that cuticle does is it basically prevents water loss. It's like putting um, nail polish over over something or like, should I say like, maybe nail polish is not the, the right idea, but because cuticle was mentioned, that's what comes to my mind. Um, but you can just consider putting the coating over something just so that um, it doesn't lose any water so it's like putting cling film yeah maybe putting cling film on top of um, a bowl of water then chances are you won't really lose water to the atmosphere um, compare the apoplast and the simplest pathways this was a question i used to get when i was a teacher the students were always like how is it any different well the apoplasts um, will move water through the cell walls and um, it will move water through the cell walls in order to reach the root hair. Meanwhile, in the simplest part, where um, the water will move through the plasma membrane and the plasma this matter. I know that's probably not detailed enough, but please check out the video that I did on chapter seven, the videos I've done on chapter seven, um, and we are explain these two differences. The last question was, what is mass flow and why is it important for the movement of water um, why is it important for movement through plants mass flow is uh, is basically the movement of solutes and water through the plant and obviously it is important because it allows the solutes and the water to move as one body so you don't get the solutes concentrating into a specific space where they are not able to move because think of the solutes like your sap for example the reason why sap is actually the way it is is because there's a bit of water mixed in but if there is no water, then the sap would be too solid to move at all. Um, so by having mass flow, whereby water mixes with the solutes and the nutrients and carries them through the plant, you're able to keep the plant alive and you're able to distribute the nutrients as needed throughout the plant. So that is the last question for this section of the workbook. Watch out for the next section, which is chapter 7.2, because that is going to follow very shortly.